This is the product compatibility presentation. The 8th out of 12 training modules in the Underground Storage Tank Class A and B Operator Training Program offered by the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. I am Suzanne Picconi, the Operator Training Specialist with NHDES. In this presentation, I'll review what we mean by the term product compatibility, why it's important, a few common additives and biocomponents in fuels, how to determine if your equipment is compatible with the product being stored, when you should review compatibility, and of course the warning signs and consequences of incompatibility. The term compatible means that two substances maintain their physical and chemical properties when they are in contact with one another. In regards to the UST system, we want the component to function properly, or it could cause a release to the environment. Is a styrofoam cup and water compatible with one another? Yes, indeed. Would that same styrofoam cup be compatible with gasoline? No, it is not compatible, and it only took five minutes for the foam to melt in result of the contact. A plastic red Solo cup wasn't compatible either, though the process of this cup melting took 35 minutes, so the outcome may have been the same, but it was not noticeable right away because the materials react in different ways. It is important to use containers designed for their intended purposes. As we saw in the previous slides, it is expected that this plastic water bottle would not be compatible to transport fuel. You as owners and operators must ensure that the components of your UST system are appropriate for the type of product in your system so that you won't have an issue like what we saw with the plastic cups. Sugars and starches from sugarcane, corn, and other plants can be converted into alcohol-based additives like ethanol, an additive to gasoline. Conventional gasoline being sold here in New Hampshire is E10. That's gasoline blended with 10% ethanol. It is acceptable and there are some facilities that sell gasoline that does not contain any ethanol, which is useful for folks who may be operating small engines, like lawn mowers, chainsaws, all-terrain vehicles, and snowmobiles. Ethanol is not the only bio component in fuels found in the market today. Vegetable oils and other fats are additives to petroleum-based diesel and heating oil. Yes, even heating oils are now being blended with at least some minimal biofuel component. That is, heating oil contains 2% to 5% biodiesel. Ethanol is highly soluble in water. It easily comes out of solution with gas when there's water present. The result is phase separation which is dependent on several factors, predominantly water content and temperature. For E10, phase separation typically happens when the water content is about 0.5% by volume. It leaves two distinct layers, one of gasoline that is now depleted of ethanol and hydrocarbons, the other where the ethanol and hydrocarbons have bonded with the water, and it now sits at the bottom of your tank because it's more dense than gasoline. This can have a negative effect on your automatic tank gauge. The top float is used to measure the amount of product in your tank. The lower one is used to detect the presence of water to let you know something's gone wrong. That float needs to be located at the bottom of the tank because water is more dense than gas. These bottom floats need to be considered with compatibility with additives because this particular model will not be able to float on phase separated mixtures. The inability for ATG floats to properly detect water is a significant obstacle in our ability to evaluate the system and diagnose the problems. They do make floats that are compatible with phase separated mixtures, but you as owners and operators need to verify that. Vapors can pass through the walls of plastic piping. This is called permeation. Vapors often remain contained within the piping sumps, but there they can cause other issues like what's shown with this vivid blue acetate crystals on the copper line in this photo. If the corrosion was due to water, the copper would have otherwise turned green. This copper is actually the result of acid made by bacteria that feeds off of ethanol fumes that have permeated through the plastic piping. 
it has been seen at several sites and in some cases more severe. If your UST system is incompatible with what's being stored, there can be aggressive and degrading effects than if you were just storing petroleum alone. When piping is incompatible, the effects are much more aggressive. This type of piping is first generation Enviroflex plastic piping model 1500, manufactured by Total Containment Inc. up until 1994, but it was never certified by the underwriter's laboratory as compatible with ethanol. This first generation piping was recalled by the manufacturer in 1995 due to degradation of the outer wall when exposed to water and incompatibility of the inner wall when exposed to ethanol. And as I mentioned before, the results were quite aggressive. When this generation of pipe was known to be incompatible with ethanol, we made announcements to owners that were either known to have it or suspected of having this type of pipe to let them know they should replace the piping in their UST system. Here is another photo of the deterioration found on that same type of piping. This is the next generation of total containment piping, model 1501, that we are starting to see signs of incompatibility. It can be identified with a bone coloration with a brass fitting on the end. This pipe has not been recalled, but our office has recently sent owners a courtesy announcement to let them know that they may want to take this into consideration instead of waiting until an issue happens. If this piping is not replaced and a petroleum release occurs, it could result in soil and or groundwater contamination, which could cost many thousands of dollars to clean up in addition to the cost of replacing the piping and having business interrupted. We are encouraging owners to be proactive and to replace the piping soon before deterioration occurs. Here are some more photos of total containment piping, model 1501. Inspectors have occasionally observed this pipe in relatively good condition, but they are also seeing that they appear to be compromised. This model has been found to have the outer coating that is either softened or has been found splitting. They may be operating, but they should be replaced before it turns into an issue. The signs of incompatibility also show as brittleness and settling, like the unusual bend in the pipe on the right. Many facilities have already removed this kind of pipe, but those who haven't, please be aware that replacement of underground piping is a substantial modification. Prior to engaging in such work, the owner must submit to NHDES an application and plans stamped by an NH licensed professional engineer in accordance with our rules and await the review and approval process through NHDES. Biofuels act as a solvent and can affect other parts of your UST system, like rubber gaskets. In this photo, ethanol has dissolved the rubber gaskets in the meter within the dispenser, causing a slow drip that is stained down the side of the filters. As of June 2019, EPA has granted approval for UST facilities to use gasoline blends that have up to 15% ethanol. Here in New England, facilities are using up to 10% ethanol currently. You will need to ensure your equipment is compatible if E15 is used at your facility. There are many manufacturers that make UST equipment that is compatible with additives and biocomponents in fuel today. So what parts of the UST system need to be compatible with the stored substance? The tank, the piping, the risers, fittings, valves, gaskets, pumps, spill buckets, containment sump sensors, sealants, yes, everything. The entire UST system. Compatibility is a requirement of the UST rules. It is supported by two major sections, for the tank and for the piping system. All the components for both of them, including gaskets and sealants, must be compatible with the stored substance. Sealants are a component which are often overlooked, but are still an important part of the UST system. Sealing the dispensing area at the contraction joints, expansion joints, and cold joints is necessary. 
In addition, the sealant is required to be compatible for this application. So how is compatibility determined? There are several resources available to you. Manufacturers have fuel compatibility charts, some of which are available online. The Underwriters Laboratory, which you can see on the equipment as a UL rating, means the equipment has been tested. The industry standards and practices, they are the result of research and testing organizations. And there's a lot of research and testing happening on a national level also. This is an example of a manufacturer's compatibility chart. This one happens to be from OPW, and a number of overfill devices are called out here. I realize this chart is a little busy, but the short of it is, the manufacturer has not yet endorsed the use of certain overfill devices with a number of grades of biodiesel and ethanol blended gasolines, but most are approved for blends of E15 or greater. Compatibility should definitely be considered when your stored product is changed. This chart also brings up an interesting point regarding the use of biofuel and heating oil. As I mentioned earlier, it's our understanding that fuel terminals are already blending their heating oil with something to the order of 2% and up to 5% biofuel. You can check on that as well here. Changing product means you must notify NHDES within 30 days, so the discussions related to the plan and review process and compatibility considerations can be started between you and NHDES regarding the equipment specifically at your UST facility. Here is another resource for reviewing available compatibility information online. If you go to the website for the Petroleum Equipment Institute, or PEI, they have a UST component compatibility library where manufacturers can upload their most recent compatibility references. EPA's website also has information online related to UST system compatibility. When should compatibility be reviewed? It is at the initial system design. New Hampshire has a detail-oriented review process for approvals prior to the construction or substantial modification of a UST system. It needs to be considered prior to changing the stored product prior to repairs or upgrades, particularly those that are different than the equipment previously used. We also need to consider new information as it becomes available, with the prospect that higher ethanol and bio concentrations will be used in the future. There is a lot of research going around to evaluate equipment, and we also need to consider compatibility when there are warning signs that suggest a problem with the UST equipment. It is acceptable that you reach out to get the manufacturer to certify in writing if a component is compatible. They have approved it in letters before, and this will suffice for proper documentation. The consequence of an improperly operating or dysfunctional UST system can be a release of product to the environment. As a result, the compatibility is a requirement of the New Hampshire UST rules. For your reference, this is what the unapproved paste sealant material looks like shortly after application to sump entry fittings. We have seen this used as a quick fix, but it won't last and it is not authorized. And after some time being exposed to E10 fuel vapors, the sealant is clearly incompatible and is peeling away from the sump wall and generally looking just nasty. This is the correct fix to the previous slide. ENVOR 408.03 shows the requirements for replacements to piping or containment sumps. In this case, you do not need to submit PE stamp plans to NHDES. You only have to submit the name and the phone number of the certified tank installer who will be conducting the repair, written approval from the piping's manufacturer, and a passing tightness test afterwards. This particular piping booth is from Bravo, 
It allows easy repairs to the entry booth on the wall of the piping sump without having to replace the whole piping sump. It works off of a compression seal and all the bolts are tightened against the sump wall. In summary, all UST components must be compatible with the fuel type. In New Hampshire, all fuel products have bio components to some degree. Why must things be compatible? Because it could damage the components or cause a release to the environment. How do you determine compatibility? You can check with the manufacturer's information or what's available online. When should you consider compatibility? Before any changes or alterations to the system. And check for the warning signs of incompatibility and monitor for those visual cues.